the presentation. You don't have to read anything else. Uh, very basic thing, and I know you're taking an anime now, so it's going to be easy for you to, to figure out what you're going to say today. So, uh, brain development, the uh, central nervous system develops from neural tube. It gives rise to brain and spinal cord. At the beginning, it begins with three primary vesicles. The pancephalon, uh, which gives the core brain, mesencephalon, and rhombencephalon. As you see in the diagram here, these three vesicles later in embryo life it goes, uh, it gives five, which is the first one gives the pancephalon gives the telencephalon and diencephalon. The middle one, the mesencephalon, they never, I mean, it stayed the same. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. Oh, did you say you post these? Because you said everything's going to be from the slide, but I didn't hear if you were going to post these slides. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, because we, I think we did it for the first two lectures, so. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, so uh, the uh, the pronciphalon gives right to, uh, divides into telencephalon and diencephalon. The uh, middle one, the mesencephalon, remains the same midbrain. The rhombencephalon divides to metencephalon and melencephalon. I mean, again, it's as a dentist, or for me as orthodontist, I took it as a basic uh, when I was doing my DMD, and then uh, that's why don't ask me what else I mean, this means. I'm trying to give you the basic that I think is the minimum level that you need to know. And, uh, as basic as you see, the questions would be right away from the slides. So uh, I wish I, I know more about it. So the brain development, eventually, the vesicles give rise to regions of the brain. So the question will be, for example, the cerebrum comes from telencephalon, and telencephalon comes from what part, what vesicle? the pronencephalon, which is the core brain. So this is how you, you should study it to know the development, which one coming from which part. And uh, we go over it, just the names of it, and then uh, we'll get some function uh, each, each one. The uh, hypothalamus, thalamus and pituitary gland that comes from diencephalon, which is the most important part of it, of the five parts. The metencephalon uh, forms the pons and uh, cerebellum, and finally, the medulla oblongata comes from melencephalon. So here, uh, in these three slides, we covered the development that you need to know about the which coming from which, and then we'll divide it to few parts, like five parts of the brain anatomy and basic uh, physiology. So we'll start with the cerebrum, then cerebellum, diencephalon, and brainstem which include midbrain, pons, and the loving gut. <coughs> this is central to the section of uh, the brain, as you see, uh, cerebrum, diencephalon here, and uh, pons, spinal cord. I mean, in the exam, you might uh, have a kind of diagram and label in it, or uh, just listing. It's, I know it's MCQ question or like, uh, like connecting which one coming from which, or which one belong to which on the diagram. Also, the cerebrum uh, provide higher brain functions, interpreting senses, voluntary mus muscle movement, memory, reasoning, intelligence, and personality. The anatomy of cerebrum uh, gives to uh, consist of left and right hemisphere, separated by the intelligent fissure. The bridge between this hemisphere, the fiber called corpus, uh, colosum, corus colosum, connect to cerebral, uh, cerebral hemispheres. The transverse uh, fissures separate the cerebrum from cerebellum, as you see here. This is the uh, cerebellum here. And uh, again, from the anatomical point of view, sulcus is usually the deepest part, and uh, Gyrus is the like the ridges or the uh, the convulsions or bumps of the cerebellum. Loops of the cerebrum uh, has five loops. 
some textbooks say four because they would consider insulia as the deep loop as part of the timbral one. Uh, it's uh, would, would go with five loops: uh, frontal loop, parietal, timbral, occipital, and uh, insula. Frontal loop assists in motor and cognitive activities such as planning, making decisions, setting goals, and re uh, relating the present to future thought. And, uh, this kind of thoughtful um, functions. That's frontal loop. The parietal one assists in sensory process, spat uh, spatial uh, interpretation, attention, and language comprehension. Uh, comprehension. And also it, it uh, helps in interpretation of the language word, sense of touch, pain, temperature, <coughs> and signals from vision hearing. Basically the most uh, sensory part is from the parietal loop. Uh, talking about frontal and parietal, there's two important area we should know. Uh, they name these two areas after the surgeons who come up with. First one is the Broca's area, plus in the left frontal loop. This area is damaged. One may have difficulty moving the tongue or facial muscles to produce sounds of speech. The individual can still read and understand spoken language, but has difficulty in speaking and writing. So he would understand, but the function, the talking, the speaking, is uh, uh, having uh, would have difficulty in, in that part. Uh, the individual who has this problem or this uh, uh, disease, they call it uh, prokaryotia. The other one is Benicus, it goes after the German surgeon. That's why it's the Benicus area. Um, he discovered this early in something. So uh, again, it's in the left temporal part. And damage to this area goes uh, Benicus, Atalgia. The individual may speak in long sentences and have no meaning adding unnecessary words and even create new words. They can make speech sounds, however, they have difficulty understanding speech and are therefore unaware of their mistakes. Excuse me? Do you have any question? Uh, if you have any question, you can ask me. I was if asking if... Uh, no, if you're not interested, it's good to, if you want to leave. No, I'm asking if Wernicke's area... If so you can ask me. You don't ask your uh, colleagues. I mean, it's disrespecting for a presenter if he's talking and looking everywhere and talking to the body. All right. Can I ask a question? Occipital loop. The occipital lobe of the brain is located at deep to the occipital bone of the skull. Its primary function, function is the processing, integration, interpretation, uh, and vision and visual stimuli major, is a major function of the occipital lobe. Temporal lobes are uh, located on the sides of the brain, deep to the temporal bones of the skull. It would, uh, it would help in assisting the auditory perception, language uh, comprehension, and visual recognition. What they call the hemisphere dominance, it's playing which part is more uh, taken dominant of the, of the brain. So each hemis uh, hemisphere controls the opposite side of the body if a brain tumor is located on the right side of the brain, your left arm and legs may be uh, paralyzed. Not all functions of the hemisphere are shared. In general, the left hemisphere controls speech, comprehension, uh, arithmetic, and writing. The right hemisphere controls creativity, spatial ability, artistic, and musical skills. So you think as a dentist, which part do you use it? Left, right for the creativity, I think, and artistics. The right hemisphere, so, uh, and the left, left hemisphere is dominant, uh, according to some studies, up to 92% of population have the left hemisphere uh, dominant. So I tried to find a good uh, table that put it all together for the previous part, previous slide. 
uh, uh, to relate which function, what, uh, which loop doing which functions. So uh, this is a very important table. So we have covered the cerebrum. Now we go uh, to go over the cerebellum. Again, uh, we we'll follow the same thing, basic anatomy, very basic, and what function the, this part of the body does. Go ahead. So I always understood that Broca's was like, you could hear someone speak and not understand them. Is it just you can't physically do it? According, again, it's like the way, the definition here, it's like difficult to move in the time, like how to say things, but not to understand it. But again, uh, if this what would, for the exam sake, this would be something that that would be our reference. If you want to read about it, uh, again, I'm not expert in this area, so um, I don't know. But just for sake of, you might read it somewhere else different. Our reference will be the presentation for the exam and uh, to clarify this. Cerebellum. So, uh, Little brain, it's inferior to occipital lobe of the cerebrum and steer to the pons. It's involved the coordination of voluntary movement, balance, and equilibrium. Damage to the cerebellum, uh, cerebellum can lead to loss, loss of uh, coordination of motor movement, inability to judge distance, and ability to perform rapid alteration movement, uh, tendency toward falling and weight muscles large speech, abnormal eye movement. So it's all about uh, movement of the muscle or, or the uh, control of the muscle movement. That's how you could relate it to talk. I mean, slurred speech because of the tongue, normal eye movement because of muscles of the eye, and uh, so far. It communicates with the central nervous system by means of track called cerebral peduncles. Uh, three ones, uh, inferior, middle, and superior. The inferior relies sensory impulse for actual position of leg.